Hey everyone, it's Ron and Maria, back with another edition of Ask Ron. All right, Maria, what do we got today? We got any good questions today? Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> so our first question is from Ben in Indiana. Hey, Ben. Seller was behind on mortgage payments and agreed to sell her property subject to the current mortgage. Right. I assigned my contract to a buyer. Right. The seller contacted me and said the buyer is always over 30 days late and she sees Ooh. no end in sight for her credit to be repaired. Okay. Is there any way for the seller to force the buyer to pay on time so that her credit isn't damaged? Unfortunately, Ben, there's nothing really she can do to that buyer because the buyer doesn't owe her any money. He owes it directly to the bank, and that's why I would never suggest you assign your contract on a subject to deal unless the seller's credit is already destroyed and they really don't care anymore. See, this is not one I would have assigned. I would have sold it on a wraparound mortgage, so then I could have handled the buyer to protect the seller in cases just like this. But there's really nothing she can do to that buyer to get that payment made on time. All right, and our next question is from Oliver, not sure from where. Oliver, not sure from where, Oliver. Okay. So he says, I have a hot deal where the seller is okay with owner financing. The only issue is that he does not want to pay any taxes related to monthly payment income. How can I tackle mm -hmm. that issue? Well, you didn't tell me whether there's an underlying debt. So that's going to be important because if there's an underlying debt, there's taxes and insurance, I'm sorry, uh, principal and interest being paid on that underlying debt, plus it already includes taxes and insurance for an escrow. If your seller is not receiving any interest, then your seller has no taxes to pay, most likely, unless your seller made a big gain on the house. Let me try to explain this. Let's say the seller paid $100,000 for the house and they sold it for $150,000, even though they sold it with owner financing. They're only going to get taxed on a very small portion of that payment they're receiving every month. Their gain is about one third of their sales price. Paid 100, sold it for 150, so about one third of their sales price is gain. So one third of the principal payment they receive every month is going to be taxable in my example. However, if they're receiving interest as well, then that's going to be taxable. So I don't know the situation here, but let's say they're receiving almost the same amount of interest as they're paying, then the seller has no taxes on that interest. So now the question is, do they have a principal gain that they're uh, responsible? And if, even if they're responsible, it's a very small amount of taxes. That's the beautiful, uh, beautiful part about an installment sale. Your taxes get spread out over years and years and years. There is not enough tax consequences here to the seller to really matter to the seller, but that might have to be explained to them. And this is a great reason, if it's free and clear, for example, this is a great reason to buy it principal only so there's no taxes on the interest. And that's how I, when a seller says, what about interest? I say, what about interest? Why do you need interest? Do you know you have to pay taxes on interest? Don't you pay enough taxes? So that gives me a reason to pay them principal only. <clears throat> I hope that answered that question. I don't know if it answered it or made it worse, but go ahead. All right, next question is from Jesus in California. Jesus. What is the process to buy in California when a FISBO has its house on a home equity line of credit of 119000 The ARV is one sixty five. He is selling at one fifty, but I offered him to take over his remaining loan of 119000 and mm -hmm. he agreed. Is this the same as taking as subject to? Yes, if you're taking over his loan and you're starting to make his payments on the one nineteen, that's subject to. However, you mentioned something about a line of credit. I didn't understand the question thoroughly. Uh, whenever there's a line of credit, probably the smartest thing to do is just you buy it on a wraparound deed of trust where you make the seller one payment and he pays the underlying debt. Or you can do the same wraparound deed of trust and you pay the payment directly to the bank or banks. But uh, taking over his debt on the on the 119 is certainly something that's done every day, day in and day out. Uh, I think I heard you say that he has a line of credit on top of that. I'm not sure. so. Um, best I can do with the question phrase the way it was. And then our last question comes from Ben again in Indiana. Okay, Ben. I bought a property subject to the seller's current mortgage. Yeah. The insurance company made a mistake on my insurance policy and had to issue me a refund. The refund check was made out to the name of the trust. Naturally, I don't have a bank account in the name of the trust. How can I cash this refund check? You need to go to your bank and um, probably take your trust agreement with it, with you showing that you are the beneficial interest. And if you don't have one, you can whip up one. 
and try to coerce the bank into letting you deposit it and um, they can let you deposit it and just hold on to the money or put a hold on it if they want to. But honestly, some will and some won't. So if uh, you can't do anything else, you're going to have to send a check back and have it. Well, actually, I don't think the bank's going to make it out to anything but the trust. So ask the bank. They'll tell you what to do. Sometimes you can just turn the check over and put for deposit only on it and sign it and deposit it and they'll take it. And that's all we have for this week. Gosh, that's easy. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, Valentine's over. Now we're getting into March here pretty soon, so let's get out there and get some deals going, and I'll see you next week, same time, same channel.